Fall time has arrived and it is such a beautiful time of year in Colorado. I had to share this moment. Our penstock steel components are now fully welded and primer coated. We installed two quarter inch fittings for pressure gauges, one mechanical and one which will be digital. All the welds were filled with three layers of beading by a local welding shop. The parts are now ready to be painted with a two-part epoxy paint. We welded a one-inch 90-degree fitting for a drain at the lowest segment of the penstock system. Standard one-inch galvanized pipe is attached. We're at the point now where the powerhouse is nearly done, the pipe is in the ground, and wires in the ground and so we're going to run some water through the rear and in order to do that I'm going to finalize the design of the rear. I'm going to put some uh, pivot points here so I can pivot it up and I'm going to put a strip along here that will hold rubber down and rubber will fit over the top of this and seal all this and guide the water into the rear intake here. And uh, hopefully that'll be a simple solution to getting the water into the pipeline there. Attaching a segment of 8-inch PVC pipe with a bell end lets us control collection of water above the weir. A temporary piece of window screen is installed to prevent any debris from entering our tank. You can see the flow through the standpipe has ceased. As the water rises, we find some leakage around the edges of the weir. During this testing, this is not of consequence, and we will determine the best way to seal it watertight when we commission the system. The great majority of the water is entering the intake. And we finally have our first water. It's been a long, hard amount of work to get to this point. Letting the water run for an extended period of time will clear out any dirt or creatures that have attempted residence in the pipeline. We've made good progress on the powerhouse as well, which now sits atop the slab foundation we poured last year. After a couple of hours, the water runs fully clean from nearly half a mile away while dropping about 250 feet in elevation. We've made slow but steady progress since last fall, and the powerhouse is painted with the steel roofing installed. We allowed the water to run overnight, and it has created its own natural course back to the creek within the property boundaries. The powerhouse has had a new door installed, and it will eventually be secured by stone walls which will sit atop the slab foundation. After draining the pipe and allowing the ground to dry, the now painted steel components were installed with stainless steel hardware and the drain system attached. Although the majority of water will be removed through the system itself, this drain sits at the lowest part of the pipeline and will ensure there is no remaining water left at the lowest point. Scrap steel has been fabricated into a brace which is attached with anchors to the massive slab of the powerhouse. The anchors are to hold the brace in stationary position only. The paint is ground off the steel penstock to allow the brace to be welded on both sides. The 55-gallon recycled PVC drone is installed for access to the drain valve and 
rebar is set in place in preparation of pouring the final thrust block. This thrust block will have the greatest pressure stress in the entire system and we've chosen to secure the whole structure to the powerhouse slab. It also sits atop large immovable rocks which will become all one mass with concrete. The PVC drum was cut in two pieces so that the smaller end of the drum can fit over the thinner diameter portion of the rest of the drum. This creates a lid we can remove to access the drain valve. With the concrete poured, we now have a thrust block that prevents any lateral movement by connecting to the slab and any downward thrust movement by the massive rock structure beneath it. Inside the powerhouse, all the parts are assembled and this device is what I call the pressure control unit. It has been sized to permit alignment without having the turbine present, which is still operating in the other powerhouse. This 4-inch coupling is installed to compensate for any small errors we have made in our measurements either laterally or off the direct axis of alignment. The pressure control unit is actually a pressure tank manifold, which has four pressure relief valves, three of which are adjustable to release at different pressures, and the fourth which is fixed to release at 100 psi. Changing out the pressure gauge will be easy, and the one and a quarter inch gate valve is to adjust the constant flow from the unit. This unit allows us to estimate the alignment of the penstock to the turbine, which we won't move until we start it up. It will also eventually control the flow of spring water into the pond on the original spring fed system where our turbine is currently operating. So here we are, we're going to do our first pressure test of the pipeline. And it's been a long time getting here, but finally we're going to test it. What we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, standpipe here to close off the drain. Water will go through here, up through the pipeline. And fill the pipeline, we're going to go down to the powerhouse and check out what we've got in terms of pressure. So uh, hopefully there's no leaks. We shall see. This coupling does not prevent pipe slippage, so the water pressure in the pipe could potentially push the pipes apart because the turbine is not in place to prevent it. So we've installed ratchet straps to prevent that sort of disaster. As the pressure builds, a couple of drips of no great consequence appear. We see no leaks on the penstock itself and the ratchet straps are holding tight. The newly added weight of water in the pipeline is showing itself and will require some adjustment to level the pipe bridge. We expected this and that is why we installed turnbuckles on each of the vertical stringers. We have a small leak of little consequence at one of the Fernco couplings on the pipe bridge. And because we don't want to risk undermining the bridge support slab, we installed a temporary means of moving the water away from the immediate area. A simple tripod was installed to secure the air vent where the pipe starts down the steeper portion of the pipeline course. With water filling the pipeline at the intake weir and water pressure building in the powerhouse, we will close the pipeline completely. As air escapes from the pipeline at the air vent, it forces water up 15 feet above the pipeline level and out about 20 feet. This continues for about 30 minutes and shows how much air needs to escape and also displays the potential power which is becoming available. This time-lapse footage of the pipe bridge shows that air is adjusting itself within the pipeline over time. The top of the pipeline is burping too. It continues this process until the pipe fills completely. The water overflows the front of the weir tank when the pipeline fills completely. The testing has verified that we have static non-flowing pressure of near 100 psi at the powerhouse. Allowing for gauge error, this is very close to the initial estimate. 
Knowing this, we have drained the pipe, installed the drain valve access cover, buried the end of the penstock, and reseeded the ground to establish new grass. Our first taste of winter is blowing in with snow cresting over the mountains to the west. Our process is continuing, and it is a long one. Patience and effort have been required all the way. We will get there, but now missing a few essential parts, not until next spring.